Well, one year ago, in the shootout to take down Christopher Dorner, one officer was shot four times in the face, arms, chest, and leg. Surgeons at Deputy Alex Collins might never walk again. But tonight, CBS 2's Crystal Cruz shows us how Deputy Collins is recovering in a way that has those same doctors amazed. I was trying to call Ryan. I called him and didn't answer. So finally, he called me back and uh, he was whispering on the phone. It was a whispering phone call by Deputy Alex Collins' brother that changed everything. Say, I think we found Dorner's truck near Bear Mountain. It was February 12th, 2013. Deputy Alex Collins with the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department had just received calls from his brothers, also with the Sheriff's Department, alerting him Christopher Dorner had been spotted on Big Bear Mountain. If anything happened to them, I'd never be able to live with myself if, if I wasn't there with them. At the time of that phone call, Collins was home with his wife, his high school sweetheart, and enjoying being a first-time father with their newborn son. The 26-year-old deputy made up his mind he was heading up the mountain, right into the crosshairs of the end to one of the largest manhunts in Southern California history. Knowing that he's already murdered two people, you know, murdered a cop, being up there, that was, you know, it's going to be in the back of your mind, knowing that this is dangerous. A group of deputies, including Deputy Jeremiah McKay, started examining footprints and tire tracks near a wood cabin. They had no idea Dorner was hiding inside, waiting to ambush law enforcement. I just felt the flash, kind of like getting, I, the only thing I can compare it to is getting punched in the face. Collins was immediately struck by Dorner's high-powered rifle. <laughs> Bullets hit his face, arm, chest, and leg. Officer, officer down, officer down. Copy, officer down. As Collins and McKay took cover behind a parked vehicle, Dorner continued shooting. They were surrounded by bullets ricocheting off the ground. Collins didn't know then that Jeremiah McKay, his firearms instructor at the Sheriff's Academy, had been fatally shot. During that same time, Collins was struggling to stay alive. I was suffocating, um, just choking all my blood. And I felt the burning uh, right on my left pec. The bullet actually went through my bulletproof vest and it hit my iPhone. I was really upset. I was <laughs> mad. You know, not only this guy just you know, shoot me and try and kill me, but, you know, now my phone's broken, now I can't call my wife and tell her I love her and tell her I'm, I'm sorry, you know, for leaving this, our brand new baby with her and I'm not gonna make it home. Get the wounded deputies out. Officers created diversions, pulled out the deputies, and airlifted them to Loma Linda University Medical Center. Surgeons were here waiting for what they were told was a young deputy shot four times. When Collins arrived, his injuries weren't just bad, but as one surgeon put it, they were really bad. Well, in the emergency room, you see a lot of gunshot wounds, but you usually don't see multiple gunshot wounds hitting multiple extremities and someone still alive. Trauma surgeon Bart Riedel was on duty when Collins arrived. Three surgeons worked simultaneously for hours on Collins' face, arm, and leg. When I first saw Deputy Collins, the first thing that ran through my mind looking at his arm is he's probably not going to use his hand. Here's the part where there's no bone. Seven tendons were ruptured. One of the major nerves to his hand had a terrible contusion of about five inches. Part of one of the bones is formed, just not there. And uh, he had a huge skin defect too. Dr. Laura Sharp led the trauma surgical team to repair Colin's leg. It was a high velocity gunshot wound just under the knee joint uh, that left a large gaping hole that killed the muscle, left a bunch of bone fragments in his leg. It was unlikely that he would walk normally again or be very active in the police department. Collins underwent 20 surgeries and intensive physical therapy. I lost eight teeth, the ones in the front. So that's, they're working on that and I talk a little different now. Um, the bullet went through my tongue, so um, in my right side of my face is numb, so I'll, I'll drool every once in a while or, you know, my wife is always wiping food off my face, just kind of, <laughs> kind of, but I mean, I'm, I'm here, so I don't, I don't like to complain. And, you know, there's a lot of guys that have gone through a lot worse. Today, healed scars mask his extensive injuries. Oh. <laughs> and doctors are amazed by his recovery. His leg injury should have crippled him. But it didn't. And in September, seven months after the mountain shootout, Collins returned to work with the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department. Oh, it's great. I mean, it's nothing short of great. It's a good feeling. It's a good feeling to be able to help someone who's actually, he does the stuff so I can go to work every day, right? And his recovery to me is nothing short of a miracle. I'm back to work. I'm getting better. This is all I ever wanted to do. 
Well, Collins doesn't talk about what happened to McKay on the mountain out of respect for McKay's family, but he did tell us his colleague was a really good guy, liked by many.